the UK, around 69% of our total land mass is laid down to farming. Now this can sometimes look like a monoculture with nothing for wildlife, but trust me, there are things to be seen. In this video, I'm going to show you some of the common and some of the less common species that you might find if you head out into farmland. I can't think of many sites that remind me more of farmland and open countryside in general than a hovering kestrel. Until recently, they were recognised as the most numerous bird of prey in the UK, but following a decline in their population of around 40%, they've been knocked off the top spot by buzzards. Despite this, there are still around 62,000 kestrels in the country. One of the most interesting features of a kestrel is their ability to see an ultraviolet light. It's thought that they can even see the urine trails left behind by their main prey item and the next animal I'm going to speak about, voles. In the UK, there are three species of vole, the bank vole, the field vole and the water vole. The first two of these are common in and around farmland and can be quite difficult to separate from one another. The most noticeable difference between them is that field voles have shorter tails compared to bank voles and this is why they are also known as short-tailed voles. Both species spend a lot of their time searching for seeds, grains, and vegetation and fungi, which makes up most of their diet, although they will sometimes eat small insects if they find them. Another animal that is a farmland opportunist is the red fox. These have the largest natural distribution of any land mammal in the world, and thanks to human introductions, they are now found in even more places. Red foxes that live in rural areas, like farmland, are usually very shy and timid compared to their city slicker counterparts, and for good reason. Foxes are often persecuted by landowners and farmers, who see them as a threat to their livestock, and therefore to their livelihoods. Although it is quite hard to accurately survey foxes, it's estimated that their populations in farmland have dropped by almost 50% since 1995. One species that faced a drastic decline but has now bounced back is the red kite. For 200 years, these birds were the subject of intense pressure from egg collectors, to the point where they were completely extinct in England and only a handful of birds remained in central Wales. Thankfully, a small number of them were reintroduced to Oxfordshire in the early 1990s and now they have spread over most of England once more. Red kites are a very large bird of prey with a wingspan of around 5 feet and can be identified when they are flying from their distinctive V shape in their tails. If you watched my recent video about woodland wildlife you would have seen red deer which are one of two native species of deer in the UK. The other native is the roe deer and this is a species that you are fairly likely to see in farmland. Standing at between 2 and 3 feet tall at the shoulder, roe deer are the size of a large dog. Only the males have antlers, which will usually have only 2 or 3 sharp points, which are known as tines. Like most wild deer, roe deer are very timid and will often run away if they see people. If they do this, you might notice their oval shaped white rump patch and lack of tail, which is a good way of distinguishing them from other deer species. One farmland animal that definitely will run away if you get too close is the brown hare. These can run at up to 45 miles per hour and are the fastest land animal in Europe. Although hares and their close cousins rabbits look quite similar to rodents, they in fact belong to a separate group of animals known as lagomorphs. The key difference between them is that rodents have two incisors in their top jaws and lagomorphs have four, with two smaller peg teeth hidden behind their main front teeth. Brown hares are not native to the UK and were first introduced around 2,500 years ago at a similar time to when chickens were first brought to this country. One farmland animal that is native and has been here since long before then is the skylark. 
although you are most likely to see a skylark when they are flying high and singing their musical song, they do of course spend a lot of their time closer to the ground. Here they run around using their specially adapted long back claws for balance and search for seeds, grains and shoots. Like a lot of birds, skylark chicks are fed different food to what their parents eat. Their diet is almost entirely made up of insects and other invertebrates. Speaking of invertebrates, farmland is home to quite a few of them, including bees. You might be surprised to hear that there are more than 270 species of bee in the UK, ranging from bumblebees and honeybees that live in colonies, to tiny solitary bees that live secretive lives on their own. Bees, alongside many other pollinating insects, are currently suffering from a severe and quite worrying decline. The causes of this include habitat loss, a changing climate and the use of pesticides, a lot of which is sadly carried out to protect the crops that farmers grow. If you're out in farmland in the early morning or late evening, you might be lucky enough to spot a hunting barn owl. Like red foxes, barn owls are the most widely distributed member of the owl family. Their heart-shaped face is especially adapted to direct sound towards their ears, which are asymmetrical, with one being higher up their heads than the other. This gives them a phenomenal sense of directional hearing and helps them to locate prey among grass and tall vegetation. Whilst barn owls rely on their hearing for hunting, buzzards instead hunt using an excellent sense of vision. As I mentioned earlier, these are now the most common bird of prey in the UK, with up to 160,000 of them living here. Their eyesight is eight times as good as an average human's and they will often soar whilst hunting before swooping down when they spot their prey. They're opportunists and will eat invertebrates such as worms and beetles, but also amphibians, rodents, rabbits and small birds including the next farmland species, the red-legged partridge. Red-legged partridge are also known as French red-legged partridge or just French partridge and as these names suggest, they are not a native to the UK. Around 150,000 of these birds actually breed in this country but that's a tiny number compared to the estimated 9.1 million of them that are released here every year. The main reason red leg partridge are released is for hunting and they're not the only species that is released for this reason as that's also true for pheasants. It's believed that pheasants first reached the UK in the 11th century when they were brought over from mainland Europe by the Normans. After this, there was a long period where their population was barely self-sustaining until the 19th century when they became a very popular game bird began to be reared and released en masse. Their diet is mostly made up of grains, seeds, shoots, fruits and berries, but they'll also eat insects, amphibians and reptiles, including grass snakes. Grass snakes are the largest native reptile, with some adult females measuring more than 5 feet long. Being cold-blooded, grass snakes can sometimes be seen along the edges of fields and on farmland tracks basking in the sunshine. They are not venomous and rely on catching and keeping hold of their prey with their backwards pointing teeth. Like all other reptiles, grass snakes cannot chew their food and as their teeth aren't able to slice, they must swallow whatever they catch whole. A lot of their diet is made up of frogs, toads and newts, but they will also eat fish and small rodents. One rodent that's common around farmland but is not usually on the menu for grass snakes is the brown rat. Like so many other species in this video, brown rats are another non-native, but unlike the others, they were probably introduced by accident. Although rats have long been associated with the Black Death, I can guarantee that it had nothing to do with brown rats. They didn't arrive in this country until the 1700s, more than 350 years after the Black Death had ended. They originated in Central Asia 
and spread around Europe and the rest of the globe on ships. As they are opportunists, they can take advantage of the food available on farmland and can sometimes reach really high numbers. Each female can breed as many as 5 times in a year, with each litter containing up to 12 pups. One farmland animal that doesn't have anywhere near as high breeding success is the yellowhammer. These are one of 19 birds that make up the farmland bird index, which is used to monitor the overall populations of birds within farmland. Although some of the species in this list are doing quite well, the yellowhammer is not. They've declined by more than 60% over the past 60 years. No one is sure what the cause or causes of this are, but it's a reminder how our constantly growing demand on farms and farmland can have a knock-on effect on the wildlife that lives there. And that's all for today, but if you enjoyed this video then you are going to enjoy this video on the screen now. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.